My name is Jennifer Storm, and I'm a grateful recovering alcoholic and addict. And today I'm going to share a little bit of my story with you, which started as a normal child. I was a straight-A student, perfect attendance, was a little bit of a nerd, um, grew up in a normal suburban home, had good parents. My mother struggled with mental health issues. She had significant depression. For that, she took uh, prescription pills, which I would later come to find out was an addiction of her own. Outside of that, though, my life was pretty normal. It was good until I was 12 years old and a pedophile found me and violently raped me. And that event changed every single thing that I knew. It's almost as though if you could picture my life as a pane of glass, in that moment, it fell to the floor and shattered. And all I saw around me were shards of glass, of memories, and of a persona that I thought of who I was, and I didn't recognize any of it. I looked in the mirror, and I didn't recognize who I was. I became, I went from this joyful, gregarious, happy child to this angry, lost, confused person. And I didn't know what to do with it. So I picked up all those shards of glass, and I stuffed them inside, right? I just pushed them down. I didn't have tools. I didn't know how to heal. I didn't know how to feel. I didn't have the language with which to explain what I was going through. So I just stuffed it. And what that did was it filled me with pain. It filled me with a thousand cuts. And I walked through that pain, and I tried to find some type of relief. And what I found were drugs and alcohol. I started with drinking, and I loved alcohol because it numbed for me what that pain felt, right? It took it away momentarily. So I drank, and I never drank normally. I was absolutely a blackout drunk. If I drank one, I drank 10, and it never, it never resulted differently for me. So alcohol worked for a little bit. I started failing school, skipping school. I got uh, thrown out of school that sunny several times. Uh, I went from being this straight-A perfect child to this mess of a person. And I went through many years like that. Alcohol quickly gave way to marijuana, which led to the LSD, anything I could get my hands on to quell this pain inside. And I eventually brought me to a drug that almost killed me, and that was crack cocaine. So at 17 years old, I became a crack addict. I was living on the streets of Allentown, doing anything I could to get high, going to places I never should have gone, experiencing things and seeing things I never should have seen. During that time, I lost many friends to drug overdoses, to DUI crashes. I lost my best friend at 15 to a suicide. I was a mess. My life was completely and utterly dysfunctional. And nobody around me really knew what to do with me, so they just kind of tiptoed around me, right, because they didn't want to get cut by the shards of glass that stuck out every now and then. I was rageful. If you told me to go left, I went right just out of spite. Um, I defied authority. I didn't like anyone telling me what to do or controlling me. I had a pretty tumultuous relationship with my mother. As I explained, she suffered from depression. Um, so we didn't always have a great relationship. It was very challenging. But like any daughter, I wanted my mother's love, so I sought it constantly, almost like another drug that I always needed. Every time I went back, she hurt me, but it didn't matter. I'd always go back. And it wasn't until she was diagnosed with breast cancer in 1996 and then eventually succumbed to the disease in 1997, that was really a turning point for me. I remember being in a hospital, and I held my mother in my arms, and I tried to the best of my ability to make an amends with her. And as she died in my arms, that, to me, was both the most beautiful experience I had ever had, and it was also the most traumatic experience, right? So I had all of these other experiences that I was pushing down, pushing down, pushing down with drugs and alcohol, and here was the death of my mother. So I became this volcano, and I erupted. It took three months after my mother's death, and I held myself in a hospital, in a, in a, in a, sorry, held myself in a, um, an apartment room, and I did nothing but get high, get high, get high, get high. I tried so hard to get rid of all this pain, and I couldn't get rid of it. It was like the pain was too great, the drugs weren't fixing it this time. So I decided, as I was hopeless, destitute, that I was going to take my own life, because I couldn't see a life that was worthy of me living. So I tried to kill myself in a very violent, brutal way. And I'm very, very, very fortunate that I'm standing here today. It's a miracle that I'm standing here today. My brothers found me, took me to the very hospital that my mother had just died in. And of course, they put me in a psych ward, because that's where they put you when you do things like that. And I woke up the next day, and I had this, this flicker that I, that I call hope. I had this feeling inside of me that I hadn't experienced before. And I think it was just the realization, well, whew, if that didn't work, right, then maybe there's a reason. Maybe there's a purpose. And so I looked the doctors in the eyes. When they told me that I was lucky to be alive, I believed them. And I said, OK, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. For the first time, I was ready, ready to take direction. And they said, you have a drug and alcohol problem. You need to go to rehab. I said, OK, sign me up. And in that moment, I made the admission that what I thought was my cure was really my disease. And I said, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll accept this. And I went to rehab. And I'll never forget the first night in rehab, there was a woman who came in to speak to the group, much like I am speaking to you today. And she said two things to me. She said, every single thing that I had experienced, she experienced. 
And I remember sitting there thinking, holy crap, I'm not unique. Someone else has gone through what I've gone through. Someone else has dealt what I've dealt with. And the second thing she said is that her secrets kept her sick. And that blew me away. And I remember thinking, oh my God, all this stuff that I've packed, all these experiences, all these pains, all these fears that I've tried to hide and push down, now I'm being told these are the things that are going to liberate me? These are my secrets. And they were keeping me sick. And it hit me hard. And so I spent the next 30 days in rehab starting to unpack those things, right? I took out every experience. I took out every shard of glass. And I started to slowly put them back together. And I started to see all these experiences. And I felt them for the first time. And I cried about them. And I screamed about them. And I wrote about them. And I hugged the fellow women in my rehab. And, and I slowly, slowly began to put my life back together. And I started to recognize and love what I saw. And what I want to tell you today is that every single one of you has that ability to change. My life radically changed in rehab. But it didn't change until I was willing to say, I need to deal with this. This is what happened to me. I need to identify. You know, these were the reasons I drank and drugged. They were just a symptom of my problem. The problem was the fact that I had never dealt with anything. So if I can impart anything onto you today, is that every single one of you has the ability and the power to radically change your lives. You need not be defined by that which brought you in here. You can stay here and take this stand next year and do exactly what I'm doing, or you can walk out of here and you can be a mentor and you can change your life. I mean, I'm standing here holding one of the highest positions in the Commonwealth, appointed by the governor. I was a crackhead. It blows my imagination. It, my life is beyond my wildest dreams. Nothing has to define you. No experience, no decision, no mistake, no challenge that you've ever endured has to be who you are. I'm living proof of that. I'm so grateful to be here today to be able to share my experience, strength, and hope with you. And I'm here to tell you that it's real. Hope is real. Recovery is an option. And it's not just an option. It is an amazing, beautiful lifestyle that will open doors for you and pave paths for you that are beyond your wildest imaginations. And I'm living proof because I'm standing here today. And I shouldn't be. I should be dead. But I'm not. And you're not either. And you don't have to be. And I want to thank you so much for allowing me to come here and share my experience, strength, and hope with you. And I just want to impart again with every one of you that you have this ability to change. What defined you, what brought you in here, does not need to own you. Thank you. So when you're sitting there and you're facing an obstacle and you're facing those times and you think, there's no way I can do this, think about that. Think about a 17-year-old crackhead who gets appointed by the governor of the sixth largest state in the country. It is possible. And when you shift the focus from the barriers to the goal, anything is possible.